My dog's chewing my slippers. I need to stop that immediately. From Zoltan. What's going on you guys? My name is Kirby Downey and welcome to another awesome video. In this video, I partnered up with Brad Thompson from Impact Props. Brad and myself go back to his earlier days of prop making where he would make some of my models. I had the awesome chance to actually meet him and hang out with him at 3D Experience World last year in February. I had a blast with him and Master Chief absolute blast but we got talking and we're like we need, we need to do a project together we need to do something together so we thought and thought and thought about what we're going to do and then as soon as we saw the night owl uh, helmet from Bo that bo -Katan wears in the new mandalorian season two series we thought let's do it i was i was in there i was like yeah let's do this but at the same time i was like i have no clue how i'm gonna make this but i just wanted to challenge myself so I went ahead and I modeled it for him. Idea being that I model it and he prints it. Where's the button? This is the final bo helmet that we were sent to him. And it has been printed and is um, currently finishing it. So this is the final model. Um, I could have made this move to up and down, but I wanted to keep it quite static. Um, so this is the final model that we came up with. So here's a cheeky little time lapse of the actual modeling of it.
So that took many, many hours and a lot of back and forth and a lot of reiterations and redesigns um, just to make sure that the, the shape was needed to be right. Um, at the same time, I was experimenting a lot with the surfacing. So I would try something, see how it would look and then go back and try something else. And eventually I figured out the techniques that needed to create the shapes that I wanted. A lot of people have seen my time lapses before and then ask a couple of questions um, of how it's made. But I'll just quickly go through my design tree over here just to quickly go through step by step some of my decisions that I made while I was making, while I was modeling this. The first thing I needed was some references. So I got this cool little reference that I found online made by Matt Donnie. This isn't the exact model of the bo helmet in the movie, but it's a good start. It gives me some shape references. That then allowed me just to kind of start generating my shapes that I needed. Um, I eventually changed the shape of this. Um, so there was a lot of back and forth over here, generating the, there we go. There's that better curve. You can see it's not exactly the same as, uh, not the exact same shape as the helmet of, of the reference that I used, but that's because um, I found that that shape didn't look too screen accurate. So let's hide these so that they're not in the way. So I had my basic helmet shape here. Let's have a look see. Uh, I used a lot of squares over here to change the shapes and that. Um, and I made that all into one surface. The beauty about helmets is that you only need to model the one side. So I had the shape that I that I needed. I then took the uh, a screenshot from the film to get the reference for the shape of the eyes and I used that to cut out the shape of the eyes. So references help out a lot and I was part of it. I joined a Facebook group called the Bo-Katan Prop Makers Community. Facebook, tons and tons and tons of references um, and passionate people on there that helped me kind of figure out where I needed to go and where I was going wrong. So let's hide that again. I had that little shape referenced and then I used some more surfaces and some reference surfaces as well. This is purely just a reference. Hide that away um, to create that shape. I then just drew a line across there and a surface filled each side and that finished off that. And I mirrored it around and then I knitted everything together. So I also needed to flatten the edge because this, the, the shape that I had originally generated had a little curve. So got rid of that there. And then I started figuring out the uh, the ear details. So it's quite simple. It's make a body, cut a body, make a body, cut a body, add some details like chamfers and, um, and radiuses. And eventually I generated the shapes that I needed, building it up block by block, essentially to create the shape that I needed. Use a bit more surfacing just to do some of the details, but you can do it any other way. And I think that's, yeah, that pretty much wrapped up that ear. So that meant that that ear was finished. All I had to do was mirror it on the other side. The right side has some other details, but I'll fix that up later. Next was to create the shape uh, around it. Um, just basically made a big block and then made this made it the same shape that I needed. I then did a combine on it so that I could separate these two so that they're two different parts. The idea being that this is going to be part of the helmet and the earpiece would be separate because um, I'd already planned how I was going to model this all together. So we'll hide that again. Do a bunch of cuts onto some bodies just to kind of get some more references. And this was basically doing more of that, creating the shapes that I needed. You know, I was just creating a nice little surface around this edge. It can be used to split that so that there is a slight tolerance, which I then delete. Loki. So all that surfacing just allowed a nice little gap there so that when this part gets stuck onto there, um, no filing or sanding is needed. Uh, it's just creating tolerance. Next up was thicken up this bad boy, give it a thickness of three mils, and then I cleaned up some of the details, some like little errors on the inside. Cut it up in half again, started doing my pilot holes and everything. And then I think it was back onto the, yeah, cutting and shaping the uh, back fin portion. Um, all very simple extrudes and that stuff to generate that shape. It was actually, uh, all I had to do was just basically make one of these and then pattern them. If something is a duplicate, always just copy and paste it. Um, don't waste your time modeling this thing over and over and over. There are instances where you would need to, but in this case, I didn't need to. So then I just made a quick little visor, just mostly for rendering purposes. Mirrored it around, bang, made it one, and boom, that was pretty much the model. This is where some of the details from other references that I found that I started to discover, I made some errors. 
I made this body as a flat piece, thinking it was flat. After looking at a lot of other references, I had to make it curved and I thought, how am I gonna do this? There's a feature called the flex feature, which is awesome, which allowed me just to kind of bend it. It's like taking a piece of paper and just bending it and uh, flexed it how I needed. And then uh, cleaned up some of the nastiness underneath it to make it a solid body and boom, then it was a solid body. So that was a fun little thing to kind of figure out. I really doubt that this curve matches that curve, but that's not important. You're not really gonna notice that. I mean, looking at that, it looks pretty damn close. So then it was about mirroring the ear, little cuffs, and then making the viewfinder up at the top. And that's just simple blocks, cut, block, cut, block, cut. Very, very basic kind of SolidWorks uses. And there it is. That is the final model. Very, very quick little one through and through my, some of the thinking that I was going through. I mean, obviously I was, I already figured out how I'm going to, how this was all going to be printed these all in separate parts so they can fit on brad's printer and also so that they can be painted much easier obviously if you've got all these little details in there it'll be difficult to paint when it's on there especially when it's separate colors i mean most of the helmet is blue and these are all kind of like a gunmetal gray silver type of look so if they're separate they're much easier to paint separately and then stuck on at the end so the main helmet was designed to be printed on a raised 3d printer all in one go well these little greebies were designed to be printed on a form 2 so i didn't worry too much about support material or making it support free i don't, wasn't too concerned about that just for some references i added a couple of labels so that it can all line up really really easily so these kind of things thinking about the person that's going to print it what is going to be easiest for them to print and, and manufacture this part um, another thing you got to think about is how do they know what part goes where so adding some labels putting that in there helps out a lot thinking ahead in your model where you're going to split everything what kind of tools the person that's going to manufacture this has and um, be able to apply the model to those kind of restraints that he or she may have this was a really fun collaborative project brad really helped me push myself to my limits by telling me it's wrong do it again um, don't be afraid to take that constructive criticism and use it to push yourself to make it even better because this helmet is 10 times better than I would have thought if I just settled with the first iteration. But now, if you go check out Brad's video, the link to his video is down in the description below. Go check it out where he prints and paints and finishes this model and does something special with it as well. It was a fun project, Brad, and I'm glad I got to work with you. It was a lot of fun. And I look forward to more and more projects like this where I just get to really explore and experiment with it. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know. Please, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you guys would like to download and print your own bo helmet files are in a link down in the description below. Check it out. If you like, if you like this video, please subscribe for any more content like this. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Not much editing needed with that at the time lapse and then it's done. Beep.